Hello friends, this video on structural organization of animals part 11 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. This we start with the support connective tissue. In support connective tissue, we'll talk about two tissues that is bone and cartilage. So let us first talk about bone. We all know what is bone, right? Bone forms the skeleton of our body, the basic framework. It supports the main organs and the muscles of our body. So it is definitely a strong and non-flexible tissue. So bone is not flexible. Now, if you think of uh, people who are non-vegetarian, they eat uh, chicken and all. So you have bone inside that. You all know how hard it is. You just cannot chew it so easily and uh, eat it. Right? It is quite hard. So bone is a strong and non-flexible. That is another important thing. The bone will not provide any flexibility. It forms the framework of the body. It protects softer tissues and organs. So since it is the outer framework, inside this, the delicate organs and delicate tissues can be protected very easily. So this is how, see, look at it. This is how the bone forms the structure. So basically this is just one bone. But when many such bones are joined together, look at, just look at the feet. Do you think it is just one bone? No, right? There are so many bones. You see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I mean, multiple number of bones are joined together in a specific fashion to form this skeleton. Correct? And over this skeleton only our body is formed. So it, the basic framework is formed by bones. Now, not only bones, you need something to join the bones as well. Correct? So we'll talk about all those things a little later. So for now you can understand that bone is something which is hard, non-flexible and it forms the framework of the body. So this is how the formation happens. There is just one bone, many such bones join together to form each organ. Then all these organs get connected, the entire skeleton is formed. Then over that you have your all other things, the accessories and a beautiful human being is formed. Talking about the structure of bone again, whenever I'm talk, I'll talk about the structure of any connective tissue, be it bone, blood or anything, we'll talk about the matrix and we'll talk about the cells of that connective tissue. So the matrix in case of bone is an extremely dense and hard matrix. That is why I told that uh, there is a lot of variety in the connective tissue and this variety is because of the different types of matrix present in different types of connective tissue. So in blood, the matrix was blood plasma, which was fluid in nature. Here, the matrix is an extremely dense and hard matrix. Because of that, then bone is also hard and non-flexible. This is made up of calcium and phosphorus and collagen fibers. So this is what is made up of. That is why you would have often seen that people, elderly people, uh, often doctors say that your bones are becoming weak now. You should drink a lot of milk because milk has calcium. You should take calcium tablets, right? Why? Because in order to strengthen your bone, you need to have good amount of calcium in your body because calcium forms the matrix of the bone. And if the matrix is there in good amount, matrix is something which is hard and dense. If matrix is there, your bone is also hard. And if the matrix amount of matrix reduces, your bones tend to become soft. And once your bones tend to become soft, what happens? The skeleton of your body, it will not remain stiff and stout. So it will start giving problems. What about the cells which are embedded in this matrix? Bone cells are called as osteocytes. This is the name given to the bone cells. They are called osteocytes. So osteocytes are embedded in the hard matrix, which is made up of calcium and phosphorus. So osteocytes again are present in cavities called lacunae. So there are these cavities. So how do they look like? We'll just see. This is, this is the transverse section of a bone. So this is your bone, I mean the transverse section. Here you see some red colored 
cells. So these are your bone cells, that is osteocytes. Now these osteocytes are present in a cavity, like uh, a small hole, I mean a uh, cavity kind of a structure where you can fix something, it is something like that. So this osteocyte is seated on a cavity and that cavity is called lacunae. And what are these fibers which you see? They are nothing but the extracellular matrix which contain the collagen fibers. So these fibers are representing that. Correct? Now there are also tiny little holes in the matrix called canaliculi for communication between the cells. Now if you see the cells are quite apart from each other. Right? So how will the cells communicate with each other? They'll communicate with the help of the tiny holes in the matrix. So in the matrix, if you see, there are small holes and through those holes, they can transfer information from one another. When I say they can communicate, what do I mean? They can transfer substances from one cell to another. So this is how the structure of a bone look like. Let us now talk about the next supportive tissue that is cartilage. So what is a cartilage? Look at this picture and then think what is a cartilage. So here you can see something right as cartilage. This is a bone. This is another bone. This is a bone. This is another bone and the two bones are joined. And in between or on the top portion of the bone you see something which is marked as cartilage. So what is cartilage? It is a semi-transparent, elastic and flexible connective tissue. So this is also like bone, a connective tissue, but it is elastic and flexible. So even there is uh, some scope of bending and stretching in case of cartilage. They will not break that easily. Mature cartilage is relatively solid. It is where do we find them? They are found in nose, ear, trachea. So if you look at your nose, the tip of your nose, you see that there is a small bone. Just touch the tip of your nose. Touch it a little hard. You can see that there is a small bone-like structure. But that is not bone because it is softer than bone. You can just move it here and there. It is not causing much harm. But please do not do it too vigorously in that case. There might be a tear in the cartilage as well. So it acts as a covering of bones in movable joints. For example, here in this case, it acts as a covering of the bone. Why do we, you need a covering? Because bone is extremely hard and not flexible at all. So for the protection of the bone, if you have a covering of something which is comparatively elastic, comparatively more flexible, so it will give a cushion-like feeling to the bone. So it can also protect the bone. So that means cartilage acts as a protection or a covering to the bones in movable joints. It maintains the shape and flexibility of the organ and also supports the structure. So the most important function of cartilage is the flexibility and support. So these are some of the places where you see cartilage. This is something which you can experiment and you can find out that yeah, cartilage is present there which is softer and flexible when compared to a bone. That And now looking at the function of bone and cartilage, you understand why they are called support tissue, right? Because they, they are actually supporting the entire body. Talking of bone, they form the entire framework of the body. So they are giving the basic support. Talking about the cartilage, they help in protecting the bones. They, they are providing some flexibility which is not provided by bones. So that means both of these act as support connective tissue, bone and cartilage. Now let us look at the structure of cartilage. As I already mentioned, we'll first talk about the matrix. So what is the matrix in cartilage? It is a solid matrix. Obviously it will not be a fluid because again cartilage is also uh, not that uh, soft and fluid. It is also hard but relatively flexible when compared to bone. So the matrix is solid. It is made up of proteins and sugars. Talking about the cells which are embedded in the matrix, cartilage cells are given the name chondrocytes. The way bone cells are called osteocytes, similarly the cartilage cells are called chondrocytes. So here in this picture you can actually see this is the matrix and these are the cells which you see here, they are nothing but the chondrocytes. Now this cartilage also plays a very important role during the development of fetus. 
inside the womb of a woman when the development of the fetus happens cartilage plays a very important role because initially when the fetus is formed there are no bones in its body everything is cartilage but later as the baby grows the cartilage gets replaced by bones that is why when a newborn baby is born it is very delicate so if you look at the neck of the baby so those areas are like very delicate it is not that stiff and strong because at many places there are cartilage which is still present and which need to be replaced by bones later in some vertebrates like sharks the entire skeleton is made up of cartilage and there is no bone at all thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again